Welcome to MEB. This is episode 15, Multiple Unit Processes. Most real chemical engineering processes involve many process units. In this video, we will extend the logic from solving material balances around a single process unit to solving material balances on multiple unit processes. The general idea here is to break the more complicated block flow diagram into smaller sub-block flow diagrams, and then conceptualize these sub-block flow diagrams as a single process unit. Generally, each subsystem will have different degrees of freedom at the beginning. If we can identify a subsystem that has zero degrees of freedom, then we can solve for all variables involved in that subsystem. Afterward, we can move on to other subsystems that might not have been solvable before. To use my jigsaw puzzle analogy again, this is exactly like starting your solve of a jigsaw puzzle where you have the most information, like on the borders or the parts with distinctive features. Then moving on to the harder parts later, like the parts with a single color, like the sky or the sand. So let's see an example. I've already taken care of translating the problem statement into a block flow diagram, but take a moment to pause the video now and study it. Imagine that you are tasked with finding values for all of the orange unknowns. It seems a little daunting at first, doesn't it? But like most good problem-solving strategies, complex problems become easier if you work piece by piece. So let's focus in on the first process unit, which is a mix point. If I ignore everything else in the block flow diagram, the mix point is a single unit process. What I like to do is draw, or imagine, a border around my subunit. Any stream that crosses this border counts toward the analysis, while any stream completely outside or inside the process does not count. Looking at the degrees of freedom for the mix point, there are five unknowns, M2, M3, and the three X3 variables. There are three material balances because there are three components, A, B, and C, and also a physical constraint. This adds up to one degree of freedom, so I cannot solve this system just yet. This is where doing a degree of freedom analysis really starts to become important. If I hadn't done one, I might have tried to solve the three material balances in the physical constraint, and I would have gotten stuck. But just because this subunit is underspecified doesn't mean that the whole problem is doomed. I have to keep trying other subunits. Moving on to the settling tank, apply the same thinking of ignoring everything else. Here I have six unknowns, with only three material balances and a physical constraint. Next, how about the membrane separator? Only three unknowns, which seems promising. But the component C does not go into or out of the membrane separator. So there are only two material balances here, not three. But wait, VJ, I hear you exclaim from the future beyond your computer screen. You told us in an earlier episode that when there are no given flow rates, just like the situation we have now, that we're allowed to set a basis in order to solve. And while I'm impressed that you remembered that, the process feed of 72 kilograms per second still counts as the basis here, even though it is momentarily grayed out. What we could do is forget about the given basis of 72 kilograms per second and then set M4, M6, or M7 as the new basis. This would allow us to start the solve here. At the end of the entire problem, we would have to rescale the flow rates so that the feed goes back to the original 72 kilograms per second. But this is a rather advanced technique, and I won't show that here. Instead, I'll press on with trying individual units. Unfortunately, the filter fizzles out pretty quickly as well. At this point, we've tried all the individual process units and have struck out so far. But all hope is not lost yet. We can try to combine process units too. Let's try the entire process. Notice that some streams are fully engulfed by my border, and those streams won't count. But sadly, I still have five unknowns, M2, M6, M7, M9, and M8, and only three material balances. We mustn't give up hope just yet, though. What about the combined system of the mix point and the settling tank? With three unknowns and three material balances, finally, at long last, I have a system with zero degrees of freedom, which gives me the green light to start solving. The material balances here are straightforward. Remember that the overall material balance can replace the most complicated individual material balance. Solve the system and take stock of the situation again. If I go back and revisit the filter system, I now have new information that I didn't have before. 
The incoming flow rate being 37.9 kilograms per second is enough to solve. I can do something similar with the membrane separator. Note that I'm not showing the degree of freedom again, but I've mentally confirmed that all these systems are now appropriately specified. Now we are on a roll. Finally, I have options for the last unknowns. I can analyze either the mix point or the settling tank. I'll let you fill in the details and practice. Here is our final completed block flow diagram. Take a moment to admire a problem well solved. Episode 15 Learning Objectives Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Break a multiple unit process into smaller individual sub-processes 2. Do a proper degree of freedom analysis on each subunit until you find one with zero degrees of freedom. 3. Solve appropriately specified subsystems and repeat those steps until the entire problem is solved. That'll conclude this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.